Thanks for joining me, Grandmaster Matthew Sadler. We are going to look at a game um, that I was really proud of, um, which is my game from the English Championships this year. Uh, so that was held in Kenilworth in, I think, May. And it was a nice tournament because um, uh, Kenilworth is, I, I don't know if you know Kenilworth at all, Matthew, have you ever been there? No, never been there actually. I've heard the name of course, but... Uh... Well, it was a seniors event held um, in a hotel in the middle of town, but there was also a lovely castle nearby. So there's sort of good walks around the castle. Um, and, um, and it was just a friendly event. Uh, so this was, I think, the first time I ever played in a seniors event. And it was the English Championships. Um, so it was eventually won by uh, Grandmaster Mark Hebden, who I had to play in the last round um, and, and suffered in that game. But what I want to show you is, uh, is, of course, not a game where I suffered, but actually a game where I won. And this was against the very strong player, International Master Andrew Ledger. Let's have a look so, then, Natasha. OK, Thanks. here it is. Uh, so I decided to play a Reti opening. And I like this line here. Um, I've played it lots of times before, but this line is um, recommended by Grandmaster Ramirez in his Reti videos. Um, and why I like it is because it kind of, you know, if you want to get in things like C5 later, um, it gains time to get that move B4 in one go. You don't have to put your rook on the B file first or anything like that. It just gets it in there straight away. And once Black's doing a King's Indian or Grinfeld type setup, um, the bishop's not, it, they're never, they're never going to do this. Um, like I think Andrew Ledge doesn't do things like E6 from here because he's already played the G6. Um, so I don't need to worry about the B pawn being taken. Yeah, I mean, uh, in, a, in a King's Indian structure, then uh, having B4 in one go, without even having had to prepare it with rook b1 you know like you would in the english or something it's uh, it's quite powerful so uh, yeah no this is pretty good um it's quite a nice system actually i enjoy it i think that's the main thing right because uh, and actually that's what i was doing a lot this tournament in the um in the english championships was was playing i didn't necessarily play um lines i'd always played before this one i have played before but i didn't always do that um but it was lines that I kind of enjoy and and I sort of find B4 a fun move to play. But I had played this line against another ledger before, which was, oh. I believe, Steve Ledger um, with an early B4. And I was thinking about that during the game, about um, which ledger it had been. <laughs> anyway, yeah, you can, yeah. you can... what are you meant to do? When they go D5, you take it off. Yeah, um, I mean, then it's quite good to exchange these bishops up here um, and get that king on the um, g7 square. And sometimes you get your queen to that long diagonal. Yes, it surprised point. me slightly that he took on d5 with a knight after having played c6. I mean, you might play d5 immediately, but after playing c6, c takes d5 is, uh, you know, feels a little bit more, uh, a little bit more natural. But um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's an opening, but uh um, it, it is a little bit strange to go c6 and then knight takes d5, but I think he got tempted by your b4 pawn. I think that was uh, that was the thing. I think he did. I think he wanted to just take it right off. <laughs> ah, I defended it with queen b3, <laughs> which was good because then he couldn't take it. But you know, um, yeah, it got quite sharp. This uh, it was it was was sharp right from the start. It was. Uh, I have actually seen this specific plan against the system before, but yeah, quite interesting. I liked your next move, uh, Natasha. I thought this was quite... Uh, I liked it as well. And, and um, I think we were both kind of making it up already by uh, absolutely, this yeah. stage. Um, well, I was anyway, and I think he was too. Um, um, but this seemed to be... I, I'm not going to remember my entire thought process at the moment, but if he took it with the queen, then he was going to get these double pawns. And I think I'd calculated even that it was it was going to be quite fine for me and I could get it back. And um, he actually threw in an intermediate move, A4. Yeah, it's always difficult to know whether these are good or not. I mean, on the one hand, it gains a tempo. On the other hand, his queenside pawns get a little bit... Uh... 
a little bit static uh, like that. You know, if you had the pawn on a5, it would be easier to push b4, I think. But uh, yeah, difficult. I mean, it's one of those uh, tricky, tricky ideas. But this was very yeah. nice. I like this very much what you did here. Yeah. So black kind of wins a pawn, but it's not going to be easy to defend that one. That like the one on b5 is going to be a bit of annoying for him to keep hold of if he wants to. So I got my knight in and attacked it straight away. And, and so you're also attacking defends. the knight on b5. So he's really got only got one move to defend both there. Yeah. And then I attacked again. And this move here, rook defending the a pawn. You'll see like a bit later in the game that that rook kind of gets a bit stuck there as it happens. Like yeah, just, it, never, it, it, ne it never gets to a happy place, this uh, this rook. It's just uh, always, uh, yeah, always uh, caught up there somehow. It's, yeah. Uh, so I keep attacking. He keeps defending that B pawn. Um, and then I took this, um, the one on B7. So now if I do manage to win the B5 pawn, um, then I'm going to be material up. So I sort of feel like my pieces are now the more active because just because of this rook's a bit stuck on defending here. Yeah, I mean it's quite it's quite a quite an unclear position, I think. But uh, I mean it's it's just a very nice unbalanced thing where you know basically anything could happen really. So uh, mm. um, pretty good. Really. Is it I mean, not? Because I, I, I was probably thinking it was quite good for me, but maybe I'm going to now turn the engine on. No, it's not at all. It's not. Good no, for the, the engine thought it was uh, it was equal. Just yeah. equal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. fair enough. All right. Well, but uh, but I mean you know it, there's there's equal and equal, right? I mean there's equal where you're just going to shake hands and uh, and agree a draw, and there's equal like yeah. this where you know. Look at the pawn. The pawn structure's uh, unclear. You know, you, you could decide to put your pieces anywhere. So it's, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I, I think any 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 ready English player would be really happy. You know, from uh, from this position. You know, why uh, aren't I just better though? For my aforesaid reasons about that rook being stuck. Yeah, I mean, Black's going to get some space, right? I mean, he's going to play what he did in the game with the e five. Um, uh, Black's going to get a bit of space. Um, I mean, you've always got that long-term B5 weakness, but on the other hand, yeah, you've got to get your pieces uh, sorted out to uh, to get it all together. So, yeah, you know, it's... Uh, okay, fair uh, enough. I, th I thought maybe after knight c2, he should play uh, bishop c6, for example. That was that was one idea. Right. Okay, so e5, knight c2. So I maybe bishop c6 and just swap. Bishop c6 here, or, uh, or even maybe knight c6, and then try and get that bishop on b7 somehow. You know, go rook b8, yeah. and uh, you know, I thought that that was that was the, the the most obvious way to play. Really, bishop h3 is kind of a middle game move. You know, it, it's sort of stopping you from castling there, but you sort of think, well, yeah. you know, I imagine right because I imagine Andrew was wanting to keep all maximum winning chances as exactly. well, so he was yeah. probably trying to get me in trouble um, yeah. by doing this one. But I think also it's a very it's a very complicated position. So you know, you, yeah, you can easily make mistakes as well. I think any, sure. you know, any player of any strength there. And knight, this is this is a nice move. I like your next move. You know, you just put this knight on this lovely, this lovely entrenched square, and uh, you're aiming at c6, which makes black maybe regret bishop h3 um, uh, a little bit. You know, it's always nice when you you play a move that that attacks a square that the opponent's just unprotected. It's a nice mm. you know nice psychological uh, feeling there. So uh, mm. yeah, he needs to now, now. Blacks, you know, suddenly needs to think. Oh, you know, how am I going to get my uh, my knight on b8 developed? You know. Yeah. So rook d8 d3. So I'm kind of not really going to castle now because of his put his bishop on h3. Um, now, this was a nice move because you're you're sort of thinking about g4 here now. So, I wanted uh, to do g4 because then it shuts this bishop off. Indeed. Um, but he he was he knew all about that. He just put his bishop <laughs> back again. <laughs> he worked it all out. So he, he wasn't gonna let me just win his bishop, no way. But 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 now his bishop's gone, I can start doing this um h4 stuff that we know so well. And what this I was, was really gonna nice. do, I mean this was really nice. Yeah, uh, I was gonna uh, try and get it up to here and then make that pawn a, a, a target um yeah. for later now, on in yeah. the game. It's a it's a very nice it's a very nice idea and I do think he should probably yeah something like h five maybe was uh, would have uh, with you know in retrospect would have been quite sensible just to uh, just to ask you to find another plan although you know you go knight e four and then you've got you know g five you've got c five of squares I, I quite like you know I do quite like White's position here you know so uh, but um, yeah. but what happened was lovely so he did um, f five and. 
I I wasn't sure if this was really the best move, but I wanted to play it, which was H5, and just carry on with this. I, I think it's very good because, I mean, uh, you know, you, you've got the H file coming, and uh, look at these rooks. They're completely badly placed to, to deal with any of that. So yeah, I, think, I think an attack on the king side was, was perfect strategy. Yeah. Because, you know, often, you know, you get some sort of gain on one side, like the queen side, like you've got here, and then you try and make everything happen there. But often when you've got that sort of advantage, Playing on the other side of the board is really powerful, and uh, yeah, this is this worked out brilliantly. So bishop b three. Yeah, and that and gave you g four. G four, opening it up a bit. Um, knight e six, and h six. So I just wanted to keep that pawn in there just to um, be annoying for the end game. So yeah, it was it was it was it was a good move. It was a good move. You know, so I'm sure Alpha Zero would have approved. It was that was a, an alpha zero. I was thinking of alpha zero at the time. So takes takes and then rook h five. So I'm just going to try and come in on the um, yeah. king side a bit. Knight d four. So that was I think was probably good. Um, and he's like kind of getting counterplay against my bishop, yeah. and I didn't want to let him take my bishop because I like that bishop. So bishop d five. Um, and then we swap yep. instead. And um, yeah, I mean, what's really nice about this, I, I guess, is that, you know, that knight on d4 is a key defensive piece, but it's totally unstable. I mean, you've just got e3 chasing it away. And um, yeah. and then after that, I mean, you know, look at that rook on h5. You've, you've put it beautifully there. You know, it's uh, attacking f5 and e5, even b5 across. You know, it's really uh, suddenly, you know, it, you're not quite sure, you know, exactly how or why, but. Every, suddenly all of your pieces are suddenly way better than the opponent so you know it's looking really yeah good. and also because i can get this um c files quite nice isn't yeah. it c files gorgeous as well yeah um here but now he's trying to attack my h pawn so i kind of just drop back yeah um knight d7 e3 uh forcing the knight to go away so knight back to e6 and so the question is can i kind of get because my rook, certainly this rook's more active than that one. Can I get this one right into the game before he has time to kind of relocate his rook? So rook well, I, I think here we saw that actually you had a really funny idea, actually. You could have gone the uh, 97 check. Ah, let's see this one. Yes. So this is Nin this is a note. Um, yeah. So 97 check. King F6, F6 and then knight c8. Knight c8. And that rook on d6, funnily enough, has got no squares. It's funny that the it's the rook on d6 that's got no squares rather than the rook on a5, you know. But uh, but that was uh, yeah. that was but it's quite a quite uh, it's quite uh, it's extremely unusual. I've never seen it. I tell you what, even that first move, like um knight e7, you kind of feel like it must be attacked there somehow or something. It just yeah, kind of, yeah, because it's got this uh, square of pieces that it kind yeah. of doesn't look possible, but that was quite kind, but I mean, you know, a move like rook c8 is just like, yeah, you know, rook c8. Because if I, I can think. get this h7 pawn, if I can take that, and you'll see I do in later in the game, then um, my h6 pawn is going to be really scary, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Rook and, nice. so now I've got two open files, so that's quite nice. Now, I mean, you're, you're, I mean, the, the value, if you just look, you know, piece for piece, all of your uh, pieces are way better than, uh, you know, than, uh, than black, so yeah, it's uh. It's excellent. Knight c7, knight g6. I did sort of make a, a bit of a slip here, but it didn't seem to matter that much because um, this move here, then I can't move my rook without losing my knight. But as actually the, the sort of strategic plan comes into play because I can just... Um, yeah, I know. It's, uh, it's, it's good enough already. It's good it's, enough. It's, it's, this is, this is just completely winning uh, already, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, uh, Six, yeah, you did it very nicely. I was very nice. nervous by this stage, actually. Um, yeah, of course. I was enjoying the game a lot, but also very nervous um, because he's such a good player. And um, here we go. Yeah, this, this was very nice. I mean, it's really, it's quite a slow motion sort of attack you know, in, in a way. You know, you seem to be taking ages and ages, but that H pawn is just so strong. You know, yeah, because uh, if he like plays his knight. To say he plays his knight to e7 or something here. This was actually the final position he resigned. Um, I could, um, I think, just take it off and h7, h8. Yeah, you've got rook f8 check and h7. You could just yeah. push h7. Yeah, yeah. It's really just, uh, 
it's unbelievably winning actually it's uh um, and the nice thing is that rook is still on a5 you know the, the rook that he played there you know on uh, on move 11 or 12 is uh yeah it's still there cool okay it's so nice thank game. you very much Matthew. that was that was the game um and that was the game that won me the english women's senior title so um so well maybe not that game because i was the only one in the tournament but um but it meant i was like you know, like if you are, I suppose you probably don't because you've never been the only woman in a tournament. But if you are, and then you do well as well, then that yeah, no, kind of makes it much yeah. much nicer. But I mean, you know, Andrew's a really strong player, and uh, I know, and was, I know. And this, was, and this was a this was a really lovely game. You know, it was a, a lovely quality game, and uh, and lots of uh, you know lots of great stuff in it. So, uh, no, quite right to be uh, super proud of it. Brilliant. Okay, thanks very much for going through that with me. And no uh, problem. And we look forward to when you're a senior as well. <laughs> a long time yet, a long time a yet. Long, which is, still... well, wait, 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 wait. No, it's not too long because you're born in 74. Yeah. So next year you can't, but the year after. So it's only actually 12 months away. And then you can play in any senior event. 12 months is a long, long time. Long it's a talk. long time in chess. 12 months, a long time in chess. All righty. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Hello, Steve, and welcome. And thanks for agreeing to show us one of your games from seniors tournaments this year. Thank you, Natasha. Happy to uh, to be here. Excellent. Not sure um, how good the game will be. You've been playing a lot of well, seniors, well, haven't you? Well, you well, played, well, you played all good. sorts. You played um, Kenilworth, I think, and uh, yes, oh. I've had a few successful or oh, an and I'm a successful tournaments. I think Kenilworth, my first seniors tournament. Which was a complete disaster, but uh, it got a little bit better as the year went on. So as I played a bit well, more, that's yeah. it. You have to you have to kind of learn how it all works, don't you? The first one's just a warm up, and then and then you're into uh, proper, three days of warm up, yeah. Proper <laughs> seniors chess, and you're getting older all the time. We all are, so then you know. More well, you and, and I should be the youngsters of seniors. We're chess, the youngsters so, uh, of We should this be event. at an advantage, but uh, yeah, uh, relative advantage. Yeah, and and any particular highlights to your year of seniors twenty twenty two? No, I, I think the two team events of you know we did in um, Europe, European, and the world. I mean, they're different from normal tournaments. Um, I mean, there's the team aspect, which is always good, uh, and there's been kind of a quite a nice kind of camaraderie and um, mm. social side to to the tournaments, and they're a little different from. You know some of the kind of more international opens <laughs> obviously there were no 15 year old indian kids to worry That's about cool. so you know if i look at back at my games you know there's less long theoretical games and you know games starting kind of earlier um you know obviously players who are st strong players still um but you know maybe not so much up on the cutting opening theory mm. uh but also but, but also you know strong fighters right people who've got 30 years of chess so you know yeah. lots of fighting games and a lot of you know a lot of resistance um so yeah it's I, i've enjoyed i've en i've enjoyed it and it's 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 quite it's quite nice and, and it's different it's definitely different from playing broader opens mm. cool. cool and the game you're showing today i think is a a trumpovsky opening yeah, so the, the background to this one is I think I think a day or so earlier I'd had a bit of a disaster. I, I, was, I was doing really well in the tournament. I think three and a half out of four, four and a half out of mm -hmm. five, and then I managed to lose a plus six position with one seniors moment. I think you'll call it. Um, <laughs> so I decided that I'd uh, go all in if you like for this game, um, and I hadn't literally hadn't played the Tromposki for two or three years. I've been learning some proper openings, mm -hmm. and so. I thought, well, time to wheel it out. At least it may have some surprise value, since I haven't played it for uh, three years. But I used to, I used to play it almost exclusively. Yeah. So the main move here is um, is e4, but knight d2 is is a kind of a fairly normal move. Um, like this is a, a team one, is it, Steve? This is yeah. This was well. this was round eight of the world, no, the, not the European, European team. Was, so I yes. was playing for. England second team, I think top board. Yes. And the guy I was playing was a pretty strong player. He he was actually, I think on, on, on you know going for the the top board prize. I think he had a 2600 mm. rating performance before this game. He was around about 2400, 2390 player, but he was having a very good tournament. Wow. Yeah. So uh, pretty pretty good player. Yeah. And it was uh, I think the penultimate round 
So you were so, helping uh, Hebs, weren't you, to get but, his... You, you were helping Mark Hebden to get his board prize. But well, was yeah, it? I think this guy was ahead of Hebs yeah. on the board prize. So yeah. I've been him to help Mark win the first board one prize. But I'd like to say that was my only motivation. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but So, um, yeah, this, so this move order is quite interesting. So he plays h6 and c5, which looks very natural to kick the bishop. But by playing h6 and then c5, it allows this gambit idea uh, with e4 here, which... I actually think it's quite quite a strong um quite a strong line the, the main lines here go sort of cd4 e5 um g5 bishop g3 knight d5 h4 and you know white gets good compensation for the pawn he'll normally win the pawn back on d4 at some point um i have had one game on this but i literally hadn't looked at this position for about two or three years so even mm -hmm. though i quite like these positions it's not necessarily the sort of position you want when uh you haven't looked at it for a few years and your opponent's bashing out his moves which is what yeah. happened in this game okay so um but but i do know the ideas quite well so that, that always kind of helps in these positions mm. so if you go back to move four is it um yeah, he played d5 um which is a move i think caruana's played okay um in the past and so you, you go on um, the next couple of moves, e, fairly forced, I think. And you get this kind of structure, you get this sort of structure that's, it's a little bit like a French Tarash where Black's played an early G5 and white, Black's going to put pressure on D4 and E5. And if White plays really slowly and doesn't play H4, you're, you're likely to lose something. Yeah. Uh, and your sensor will come okay. under pressure. Yeah. So H4 is the way to play, just to open the position up and take advantage of Black's weakened structure. Yeah, so he's got to do something about you're going to just... Yeah, I mean, he could take on GH4, but then I'll take with a rook. Mm. Um, my knight will come to F3. I get good active play. Mm. Um, even if I lose a pawn, these positions mm. are a bit better for white. So he played rook G8. He played it immediately, so I think he was still in preparation. Oh, so he's still in his theory, I'm sure, he's in yeah. in preparation. I, you know, D5, the D5 move is not a normal, is not a common move. So right. I didn't, yeah. I, you know, I, I knew the ideas, but I didn't know the actual moves, but I, I managed to find the right moves over the board. So fair enough. Oh, this Rook, is nice. Rook, Rook H7. Yeah. Go for the, uh, go for the direct. Uh, it is direct for sure. Yeah. Direct attack. Yeah. Takes and then Queen H5. Queen H5. This is what everyone likes. To yeah. Do. So yeah. he's got but to do something depend. about that. Queen E7. Knight f3, fairly natural moves. Yeah, so in this situation, um, you know, obviously I'm going to try and um, win back the d4 pawn at some point. I'm going to play bishop b5. The issue I've got is that although my rook on h7 looks great, at some point he's going to play bishop g7 and knight f8, and you're going to lose the, you're going to either lose the rook or you're going to have to spend some moves moving it back. Yeah. And you know, the really, the really the way is to work out how to um, sacrifice the exchange while getting um, getting active, right? Mm -hmm. So that's really my plan here, is to sacrifice the exchange and yeah. get good compensation. Oh, it's quite all or nothing, this game, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> but it's you always get a lot of positional compensation um, for this. It's, it, it's you, you, sacrifice, yeah. you may sacrifice the exchange, but... But you get good compensation. Um, and, and this position is good for me, actually. I mean, it's, mm. I don't know what Stockfish says, but it's sort of plus one or plus one and a bit or some, something like that. So I, th I think it's um, just a nice position for white. Um, so, yeah, so here, sacrifice the exchange. Yeah. Um, what did he play now? Uh, King D7. King D7. I hadn't expected that. So if you go back and I'll just show you why, King D7 is mm. a good move. If, for example, um, he played rook h8, um, white will then play um, bishop h4, and if, say, queen f8, exploiting the pin, queen g5 all just wins. Um, coming down on the... I think that wins. Spend, yeah. Yeah, I mean, maybe he can play bishop d7, but then uh, bishop c6 and knight f6 is very strong, so... So King D7 is an idea of moving your king over to the queen side. Was he still um, playing really fast, do you remember? No, he started playing a bit slower, but um, yeah, I wasn't sure. He was he was well up on the clock on, you know, obviously I've made, this is a fairly committal type position where you have to spend a bit of time. Mm. Um, 
but I was also trying to play by feel a bit in these types of positions. You're just trying to play for the initiative and play for the uh, for the squares. So yeah, I put Bishop H4. I think the computer's first choice is just slow and knight B3. But Bishop H4 is very much, I think, the human move, which is mm. to, um, you know, you hit the queen with tempo and you get your bishop to a better square. Um, it's a good move, but I think knight B3 is even more accurate and play Bishop H4 a move later. Um, I think the point maybe is that black can't do that much in mm. the meantime. So now knight F6. He's got to take. Actually, the computer says I think you could actually play EF as well, which, right. but it doesn't look very obvious, right? To, to you know, to looks like to you want e. to put your pawn there to kind yeah, of yeah, bishop f six, which controls h eight and has, yeah. keeps the bishop very strong, looks much better. And I, I didn't even consider EF, but EF is also yeah, because also good. these pawns might like move down the center and leave. <laughs> exactly, it doesn't, it doesn't look very appealing. Uh, bishop f six, I didn't think about really. That was. Uh, yeah. but it's apparently it's playable. Okay. Um, and so he the rook g2. So yeah, this is a kind of a fairly critical point of the game now. And you know what I played was knight f3, which is just to kind of, and, and which looks like, again a, a natural move to to develop your, all your pieces to take on d4, open up the position a bit, and then 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 to move my queen over to the queen side, which is what happened. But um, I think the computer's first choice is actually just to play queen f3 straight away. Right. And then move the queen over to queen f3 to a3. And you'll see why in a little bit, um, which is, you know, it's a bit better for white. Um, so queen f3, I think rook g6, queen a3. Um, oh, Don't sorry, sorry, not rook g6. Yes, play rook g8, sorry. Okay. Yes. Rook g8, queen a3, queen f8, and then bishop c6, bc, and queen a5, and then bring the knight to b3. And you know, white's got a nice position. Um, it's not winning, but it's it's more than enough for the exchange mm. with the dark square nice. control. Yeah. So yeah, I, I was trying to get an even better version than this, but it it, yeah. um, it probably that was probably better um, than what I played. So I played knight f three, um, which I think um, what did he do? He played um, king c seven. He did king c seven, which is fine. Um, and I took on d four, and this is a crucial move now. He he, he played um, a six, which the, the reason I think he played a6 is he's worried by my plan of bishop f1, rook f2. If he doesn't, so if he doesn't play a6, I may play yeah. bishop f1, rook f2, and then the knight comes in to b5 and d6. Um, but I think that would have been better. So I think the best move for him now is, is to allow that because you'll see what happens after a6, which just mm. he loses. If he plays bishop d7, for example, instead of a6, I think it would have been better. Then white plays, say, bishop f1, uh, rook f2, um, knight b5 check. Yeah, check. King somewhere, I guess, king b8. King b8, because he can't go to c8 because of the knight yeah, check. Yeah, king b8. And then I, I was originally going to play queen, I think if I play queen h4, but apparently, if he takes on, I think he can maybe maybe able to take on f six. Okay, give back the exchange. And give back the exchange, and White's still got full compensation, but it's more yeah. dynamically equal, um, yeah. and it's less clear. So that's. But again, it doesn't look that. You've got to see. It looks, the visually, it looks to me. It looks nice for White, but yes, I think maybe it's easier still to play for White, but. Um, yeah. But I think black can hang on in that position. Okay. So he, oop. No, go. go back a bit more. He did. Um... So he played a6. Um, and the yep. problem with a6, you'll see now, is I, I, I can take bc. And now I play with the queen f3. So you remember where queen f3 earlier? 
yeah the first choice here i get a really good version of it because i've now got my knight to d4 and yeah. then i'm going to transfer the queen to the queen side and he thinks he can play rook g6 and f6 but you'll see i've got a nice little intermezzo okay so he's oh you got an intermezzo this is great okay yeah so now he plays queen a3 now i play queen a3 and now after rook f6 oh you, you've got queen d6 check yeah so i don't take back and so it's quite quite nice queen, lovely 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 um king has to move Seven. and now i can yeah. not take back again and rook d3 oh really nice okay great yeah um, and He's only got one move to avoid being checkmated. Rook b3, yeah. king c8. Yeah, so now, you've got both your major pieces in there before you... Yeah, so now I've got this beautiful position with all the dark square control, uh, knight against bear bishop. Um, and the game would almost be over, but you know my control is so big, but it, we're approaching yeah. time control and I'm, right. I'm a bit yeah. short on time. Yeah. But uh, obviously got a huge position. Yeah, uh, clearly don't want to swap off the queens. <laughs> no, you're going you're, you're um, to mate him, but he's not letting you, not immediately. Yes, but no, ninety-five is also a nice, quite a killer move. Wait, wait, ninety-five. So, oh, just queen you five, just go with three. Yeah. And now this is the other final interesting part of the game. Now, queen f six looks like a, a rookie blunder because it think, looks like you could take on d seven and play yeah. queen b seven check and win and a rook, rook, be a rook up. Yeah. yeah. But, Practically, it was a good try because it allows you black to go for a perpetual. It doesn't work, um, yeah. as you'll see in the game, but um, it was a, it was a good practical try. And actually, I, I probably shouldn't have gone for this because I didn't see okay. right to the end. I just yeah. intuitively didn't believe he had a perpetual. Yeah, it, it was quite close, as you'll see. So we repeat a couple of times just to get to the time control. now if you slow down a bit here you, mm. you've got to find a way he's threatening um you know just to play queen f4 and if i play king c1 he can play so queen f4 king d1 queen f1 king d2 queen f4 which is perpetual so mm. you've got to find this way of getting to king to c1 in this position but without um but yeah, without the queen being able to go to f4, yeah. so you have to triangulate with your queen to go to d2. You'll see what happens here. Yeah, so if you go back and before queen b4, yeah, so in this position, he now let's say he plays, I don't know, queen h4. Now you could play king d1, so you don't go to d2, and right. let's say he plays queen h1, yeah. King D2, yeah. then Queen check to G2 or so, or to H2, and now and you play King C1. On, um, you see, he C1. can't get his Queen to F4 with check, and you hide your Queen away. But, okay, but what about Queen G5? King D2, Rook, Queen, uh, Rook D2, Rook, Rook D2, D2 now. And now Queen yes. G1, Rook D1, and then the King comes uh, to D1. Okay. So, so it was a little bit hairy as I had to yeah. work this through because you know, allowing this probably it was it was objectively the best move but not the best practical way of playing because mm. it, it, you had to find this um, winning sequence which I probably didn't need to make it allow this perpetual opportunity. No, okay. Oh, well. But anyway, the, yeah. but after finding this this idea of king e two to e one to d one mm. to c one. This is just winning now. So he, he'd seen this, and um, once, you, once it's you that's doing the checking, it's much better. Isn't yeah, it? once I'm doing the checking, it's the game's <laughs> over. I think I'm a, I'm a real cup at the end of the day. So I cool. think he resigned well, about it now. So very nice game, Steve. Yeah, thanks for showing us that. And I liked the two intermezzos in the middle. <laughs> that, that was really nice. It's always quite nice when you can do it, and it's fairly fairly risk free as well. So yeah, uh, it wasn't it wasn't the hardest thing to find at the time, but uh, yeah, it's quite aesthetically nice to play brilliant okay so thanks very much for showing the games and um and i'm glad you've been enjoying your uh, year of playing lots of seniors events and uh, hopefully you'll get the chance to play some seniors events in uh, 2020 hopefully we'll do another well. one next year yeah no it should be it should be excellent good. should be good. great right. thanks a lot nice see you see you then bye 
Hi, Andy Lewis, thanks for joining and uh, talking to us about your experiences with Seniors Chess. What, uh, hey, yeah. So um, I'd like to uh, start by going through a bit of a game I, I played recently. I actually uh, presented um, this game or rather this snippet from the game to um, a group of largely non-chess players um, okay. recently. And what I was going to do in showing this part of the game is one of the key quintessential skills of a chess player. So let's look at let's look at the game. Okay, and um, we are going to start on the twenty seventh move. We are in Dresden. Um, I am playing Bernd uh, Neubauer, and we have after some extremely interesting moves reached the following position. Okay, so um, um, this is the position that we're going to start the, the game from. But before we actually talk the, the game through, I actually want to show you this position here, which happened four moves uh, later. Now, um, when um, most chess players see this position, um, they come to the conclusion fairly quickly that notwithstanding White's material advantage, um, White is in a whole load of trouble here. So I, I don't know, Natasha, if you've got any immediate reflections on this on, on this position. Well, I have to say your queen's right in there in the thick of things. Your rook's on an open line. Your knight, well, it depends if your, it's your move or not, right? Because your knight is a bit under attack. But basically, um, it looks like the white king's in quite some trouble because black's major pieces are right nearby. Okay. Um, yeah, so the, the only real thing that white has got going for him um, in this position is a slight material advantage uh, piece up for, for two pawns. But you mentioned, Natasha, a, cumber of, cum, a, a couple of very, very key features. So one is centralization. So look at the black, black queen, centralized on d3, white queen on g2, bit off to the sideline. Look at the rook on e8. It controls extremely powerful um, um, uh, file. Rook on g1, not going quite so much and thirdly the fact that the white king is way out exposed mm. black king is very very snug on um uh, on on g8 so um let's just look at uh, what might go wrong immediately if white makes a mis misstep so white might make the move bishop b2 okay and that will be a horrible move because of queen e3, which is actually checkmate. Ooh. Going back here. So, so that knight is useful there on h2. Yes, indeed, the knight is playing a part. So but the obvious thing which um, white might do is to play the move um, queen takes h2. So now white is in fact two pieces up. So black has got two real strong moves here. Um, I probably would have played queen takes d4 check, but um, which is a great move. But mm. the the simplest move is actually to make the move c5 takes d4, which has got all sorts of problems. So the big one, let's see if I can use do this. So the big one is there's this enormous threat of rookie two check, which would not only win the queen, but uh, would deliver checkmate in Thanks very, well. very yeah. um, short order. So in this position, I don't think it takes too much uh, analysis or, or effort um, to um, convince oneself that black has got a great position here. OK, however, that's the easy bit, OK, because I don't just have to um, assess this position right here. I've got to look at this position and try and hold it in your mind if you can back in this position here. So um, White has just played the move um, queen d2. Um, he's trying to use the queen for lateral defense, maybe going to f2 or g2, 
to force the exchange of the, 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 the Black Queen. In this sort of position, what the defender really wants to do is to exchange queens. So um, now I've got um, a challenge and I've got to, um, I've, I've got to find a, a great sequence of, of moves here. Otherwise, I'm going to lose my attacking advantage. So I had 10 minutes left on my, my clock. I spent eight of them analyzing and checking this, um, this my, my, my calculations. So I came up with a very, very precise sequence of moves. Let's go through them. The first move is knight g4, okay? With um, lots of um, lots of ideas. Um, so knight h2 check is one of them, bishop d4 is another. So if it were black's move here, um, there's all sorts of things he could play, but I'd very much like to play this move here, bishop to, to, to d4, just bringing the third piece. The knight can come in as well, can't it? Indeed, the knight can come to e3 with check. Yeah, can go yeah. to h2. It's all it's all happening. But um, um, White is a very very strong player, and mm -hmm. he had um, he had surely surely um, seen the move knight g4. He's got a very very strong reply, so he thinks he plays the knight back to f3. Okay, attacking now, the queen. Um, my queen. If my queen goes backwards, well, you know, it's going to be it's going to be a piece up. It's not over, but uh, he thinks he's got um, after queen h3 check. He thinks he's got a very very strong move here, which is queen g2. Queen okay, G2. and so the point of that is it stops the check, um, but also is trying to exchange queens and also attacking the knight. Exactly, exactly. So he was probably reckon on reckoning on this move just completely solving his problems. Mm. Nonetheless, um, white has a very, very strong sequence of moves here. So well, knowing the final position, yeah, I can guess it's knight h2. Oh, it's very nice, isn't it? Because then... knight h2 check. So obviously the queen's pin can't move. If he plays knight takes h2, then a queen d3 check. Yeah. f2, and I think rook e2 is... Um, Rookie two is probably not the strongest move actually, but you can see it, yeah. uh, it wins. It wins the the, the queen, and uh, uh, you know, it's not worth talking about. So um, after knight f two, knight h two check. He's the king has got to come forwards. Okay, and again, you know, what's going to happen here is is black and going to can exchange pieces and uh, leading to a maybe favourable ending for um, white. No. Um, Black's got this deflection move, Bishop D4 check, and he's got no choice whatsoever but to play the move Knight takes D4. It's the only legal and move. And yeah. Queen D3, we've got the position that we, we recognise this position now. So the D or one of the quintessential um, skills of the chess player is visualisation. So basically, you can say it is it is from this position mm -hmm. to see uh, this position. So, had you seen that all in advance, Andy? Um, what I can say for certain is that in this position here, after Queen D two, yeah. um, I saw that um, Knight G four um, would lead by fourth to um, the to this position, and that. Um, my judgment was this position was highly favourable yeah. to, 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 to black. So um, um, chess isn't just about um, um, cognitive abilities. So um, um, if you could see this position from the position four moves earlier, you would be a pretty strong chess player. Okay. But... Um, if you can if you can find such a sequence of move moves check it accurately um, with not too much time on the clock then you've got the possibility of being um, a great chess player i actually showed this um this uh, uh continuation to to john ems um he very generously um agreed to go through this uh game with me and frankly um although he's obviously he's running cold he's, he I'm sure he would have seen this in an actual game. He couldn't actually quite see um, the, the continuation 
um, of the game from from this position onwards. Mm. Um, so um, um, the game is not over. Okay, so um, White actually came up with a move that I hadn't seen. Okay, and this is something something what something that happens as well. Something you've got to be prepared for um, in chess that you know you can do a lot of calculation, but nonetheless. There's a move your opponent has, which uh, you don't see. So he played the move 96, which um, basically what he's trying to do is he's trying to um, sell the life of his knight to close mm -hmm. down the e-file temporarily. So he wants to block this rook right out of the game. He does. He does. Yeah. So obviously um, it's a free knight, so I better take that. Okay. And... Um, he, um, one thing he might think about doing here is playing the move uh, queen takes h, h2. What happens then is, lots of things can happen, probably simplest move is e6 takes d5. Now, rook e2 check is once again a threat. So I'm not even sure how we um, we even uh, defend, defend against this. Mm. But uh, you can just see that um, in the best case scenario, um, um, White is going to, going to go into an end game in which um, uh, he's going to be many, many uh, pawns down. So he'd like to play, well, he can think about playing queen takes h2, but he plays a stronger move here. He plays a move rook e1. So what he's saying here basically is that um, the knight on h2 is trapped and he wants to use a pin on the e-file to yeah. regain an important pawn on e6. Okay, uh, but um, um, I have a very strong move here, which is queen c2 check. And what happened here is, as so, I, as so often happens, let's just refocus on the position. What will happen so on is that um, when players have short of time and they've got a completely lost position, they just let their flag fall. Oh, and this is what he did. Okay. So um, if he if he meets this threat with rook e2, then... Um, you can at least take the bishop. Can at least take the bishop, yeah. Should be good enough. King takes h2, and well, as you can see, I'm not even material down, so move like rook f8 followed by rook takes f4 check looks looks fairly fairly decisive yeah there's there's just so many ways to, mm. to play the position now um so one thing he might think about doing here is to um just retreat the the king so he could play the move maybe king g3 or king g1 uh, yeah. not sure which of these is best but let's look at king g3 um so what's going to do then was simply take here. He takes back. The knight goes here. Um, he should really try and keep the rooks on in this position and play play pawn takes um, pawn. So try to make something of this um, pass pawn on e6. Uh, but um, there's a very very uh, simple continuation of moves here, which is I'm going to play the move. I'm going to play the move uh, knight, knight h3. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to play knight here, followed by knight here. That's going to move the pawn to e7. I'm going to move the knight back to f5 again, and then just take on e7. So that was a that was a game. Let's just leave the final position on the board. That was a game that was... Um, um, very uh, very nice uh, finish I thought by um, by by me okay so let's go back to the video chat again um, maybe you could um, uh, you could yeah take away the the, the, the board well it's gone now okay okay so thanks so, so much for showing the game Andy that was um, that was a, a big uh, a big gain for me for um, a, a number of uh, reasons yeah. So um, um, one thing about the Dresden tournament, it was the first tournament tournament of its kind, which I played in for um, three years. 
So um, when I retired from my work career in 2014, I actually spent quite a lot of time um, playing chess and, and studying chess. And um, this uh, led to me after about three to four years achieving my um, highest ELO rating, um, which I got to, I think, in uh, January, February 2019. What Congratulations. How old were you, Andy, when you got your highest FIDE rating so far? Uh, highest, mm. highest FIDE rate rating so far. So I would have been just over 58. That's quite, it's quite a rare. That's a good age to take your highest FIDE rating. Quite rare. But yeah. what happened then? So um, I played in a double tournament in in Rhodes um, in, I think it was April 2018. I lost ELO points. I decided to, I did that in order to make first improvements, I needed to really change my repertoire, uh, change my approach to, to chess. And I had started doing that when what happened? We had COVID, we COVID. had the lockdown. Yes. So no more chess as we know it for nearly uh, three years. Yeah. So very pleased um, to um, play at Dresden. My score wasn't bad. I still lost ELO points, but uh, I had three, um, three, three nice wins, including the, the one that you can, can see. Uh, another thing I think as well, which you um, probably touched on in uh, your book, uh, Natasha, mm. um, Chess for Life, I believe is uh, the, the, the title of it. So what sort of, what sort of skills do um, do chess players need to try and retain in order to be yeah. successful in chess and late at life? So I think visualization is uh, is a, a key one. So I think to myself, well, I could I could solve that that problem during during the board, and I'd say I probably did that as about as well as I did when I was twenty five. Wouldn't say better. But I, yeah. I think I did it, did it uh, pretty well. So post COVID, starting to play international um, chess um, again. Looking forward to the next seniors event, hopefully. In just just on your visualization, then, do you particularly practice it, or how do you keep that skill? Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. So um, there's a, a podcast by another. English senior, um, Terry Chapman, and he talks about his approach to, to preparing yes. for, for uh, international events. And he says, no matter what he does, is he practices puzzle solving every day. Yes. There's lots of great uh, tools out, out there for that, including one on Lee, Lee Chess. You can't mm -hmm. really go, go wrong. There's so many good ones. The important thing, basically, is to the talk you've got to do it basically and yeah. Terry said Terry says he spends minimum of half an hour to an hour doing this every day before a tournament and yeah. he says that no matter what else he he does he definitely he... the tournaments I've played I felt like I've played well at I my build-up has been doing sort of um quite a lot of tactics or definitely tactics in the run-up to the tournament I, I definitely think I agree that that helps yeah yeah, you've got to, I mean, there's a saying that um, chess is 90% tactics and um, I, I don't know whether we talk about shogi on, on this, but... Uh... We should talk about shogi, yes, of course, Andy, yes. So, um, so, so, so Andy and I both play shogi, but I didn't realise that Andy played shogi until um, Dresden. But in fact, immediately after this recording, we're going to be playing a shogi arena. But shogi's lovely for chess players who don't know shogi. It's, it's kind of a lovely game for tactics because um, each game is the basic a, a mating attack as opposed to queening a pawn and, 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 and mopping up. Absolutely. So, yeah. so, so um, think of, I don't know, um, the Sicilian dragon. OK, and imagine that um, every single game of chess ends yeah. like a Sicilian dragon in which one side is defending one side is attacking, um, players are prepared to sacrifice absolutely everything in order to gain mate. So think of a chess game that always ends like that. Well, that's Shogi, basically. Yeah. But you don't even need to know all the opening theory, because that's the problem with the Sicilian dragon, that you have to learn so much stuff. But um, Shogi, so I should, we should say that's Japanese chess. Um, so it's it's like a, a chess variant that's um, very popular 
in Japan. Less popular in the West, but it should be because it's such a nice game. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a great game. And um, <clears throat> um, one of the reasons why I've made an enthusiastic return to, to Shogi is that uh, if chess is 90% tactics, Shogi is 99% tactics, um, basically. So if you want to sharpen up your tactical skills, well, you know, obviously the, the tactics are, are not, not the same, not to be confused with each other, but it's a great form of, of uh, tactical training. So stuff like um, looking at the possibilities, um, looking at what your opponent might might do, um, looking at looking at things like um, uh, flight squares ar around uh, the the king. So shogi, I think is is close enough to, to chess to be a kind of realistic form of um, chess tactical training. training. Yeah, cool. Brilliant. Okay, thanks very much, Andy. Thanks for showing the game. Really nice game there. That's uh, um, it's always nice, isn't it, in a tournament where you've got some some games that you really like to uh, to to be able to play through again. Afterwards. So so congratulations on that. Um, and I don't think we've even mentioned yet you are you are part of the England two team, and um, and so yeah. So we were um, we we did pretty well, didn't we, England two? Um, in Dresden, we we were yeah um, up on top board at the end. Um, and uh, and had had lots of good results so um it was lots of fun to be part of that team um and do you have any plans to play any seniors next year andy um i have i have plans um or rather hopes so of yes. course we don't know yet what the what the international seniors calendar would um look like um yes i've managed to play in four of these events in 2000 um 2019 um, yeah. I don't know. I managed so many this this year. You know, yes. Times a bit harder, but uh, um, I certainly like to try and play a couple or at least one of them. Excellent. All right. Well, let's hope you get the chance. And um, thanks very much uh, for for showing your game. Thank you. Hi, Phil Crocker. How are you doing? Hi there. Hi there. Yeah, I'm. I'm doing fine. Thanks. Yeah. Great. And you have played, actually, you've played in several senior things this year, haven't you? Because I know you played in um, the English Championships, the British Championships, and in the European Teams Championships in Dresden. So I want to first of all say congratulations because you were the joint winner of the British Over 50s Championship, weren't you, Phil? Uh, I was, yeah, somewhat a surprise, but very, very nice to to do that, yeah, yeah, together with uh, uh, Paul McWarney and, and Chris Duncan, yeah, um, yeah. And how has it changed your life? Uh, <laughs> I'd love to say it's fundamentally changed my life, but no, it, it's it's uh, it's fantastic to win it. It's a it's a real surprise, and yeah, no, it's nice to achieve something like that every once in a while. Um, you know, may not happen again, but uh, <laughs> I'll, yeah, I'll make British it champion. Again. So, pretty yeah. nice cool and um what about dresden tell me tell me a bit about uh how you found dresden yeah so um, i mean i mean dresden was my first the first time i've ever played actually in any kind of um kind of team tournament that goes on over several days i've played like in four ncl teams or club teams but but not kind of a seven ten day kind of thing like this so it was quite interesting from that perspective um and so for the first time in a team tournament, first time in a seniors team tournament and all of that abroad in Dresden, which uh, is, you know, a, a very nice city. Um, I'd been there, I think, for one night once a few years ago, um, but been there for, I think it was 10, 10 or so days, a good chance to, to look around. And it, it is a very nice place. So, um, yeah, we were lucky, weren't we? Because we, we were in a very nice hotel as well. It was like, it was like really nice. We had good weather um staying in a nice hotel and we had um team walks didn't we each morning we had um... yeah well part of part of the training i suppose for the optimum performance and a little somewhat enjoyable as well yeah go for a walk on on the river uh, into the town and so on it's very nice and and the weather was was uh, very nice indeed very sunny for the time of year so yeah very lucky uh, to be able to do that yeah Excellent. Okay. Um, you can tell us a little bit more about chess tourism as we play the game, if you like, but uh, you've got a game to show us today. Yeah. So, well, 
th- th- this was played for I, I was playing in the England three team um, yes. together with um, Brian Valentine who, who actually does all the grades and so on um, yeah. for the UCF. He, he was our captain and then Peter Hassan. He captained very well, didn't he? He, he, he did captain very well. I think it would be um, great if he would do the captaining again <laughs> in future years. Yeah, no, no, he, he, he was, he was, you know, a, a real uh, pro at, at captaining. I, I mean, some might say that with only four players and four players to choose, uh, yeah. some of the more difficult choices <laughs> didn't need to be made. But, you know, he looked after us. He, he was always there if there was a game running late and so on. So, yeah, no, I think we had a, a decent yeah. team for it. Well, I mean, your team did extremely well, I think, because you tell me you won, um, you won an award, didn't you? Um, I mean, if you looked at the grades, you would have put us down as kind of no hopers, right? Which I think that the ranking list did. We were ranked something like 24th out of 30 or so teams. Um, but we actually finished in the end 12th. Um, and that was even oh, after wow. losing, losing yeah. in our final round. And um, we played one of the top teams, Berlin, in the final round. You didn't finish our... ahead of England too, did you? No, no, no but it, it was That's a theoretical good. possibility in the final round yeah. that we might have done. Uh, if we'd beaten uh, Berlin, I think we might have done. But they had like a GM and three IMs. Um, but our kind of bottom board, Ray Tarling, who was rated, I think, a little less than 1800, was mm. almost beat the IM um, on bottom board. Drew in the end, but very, very close to winning. So yeah, it, it could have happened, but it, but it didn't quite. Not quite. Next time. Next time, yeah, for sure. Yeah. OK, so what's the game you're showing us today? Um, yeah, so this is, I think, from game from round five. And I'm white and I'm playing um, the top board of um, Graz, which is, uh, I believe, a, a part, of, part of Austria. Um, mm. So my opponent is Fred Weger, uh, Fide Master, and I am white. And we'll, we'll start the move. So yes. D4. Um, Standard. Did, you, did you do any prep for this game? I did do prep, and from what I remember, I, I think he had like two opening systems he did. One was the, the kind of modern type system, which we'll see now, um, and then he also did kind of a Nimzo Indian um, kind, of, kind of thing. Um, so I think most of the, the prep I did, such as it was, I, I prepped for the uh, for the Nimzo type thing, or I probably would have played a Catalan. Um, but he actually went for this modern um, line. And in fact, he did a modern line. I don't think I'd seen him play it before. And I'm okay. not sure he had played it before because he spent quite a lot of time um, yeah. looking at the moves or thinking about the moves, rather. So, I mean, I took him, first of all, first decision is to go for the sort of king pawn um, side oh, yeah. of thing. Um, but I think he was probably going to do something like this anyway. So, so th- this is all fairly standard. And he's playing a line where black basically does very little to start with. Black kind of just waits on the second, third, and back rank and says to White, okay, what are you going to do about it? So you're um, doing the 150 attack. Well, yeah, I mean, why not, right? And it, it, maybe it should be rebranded the over 50s. Uh, the over 50s attack. I think we need to rebrand this opening, yes, to the over 50s attack. It's true because we all play it, don't we? we... Yeah, I mean, I mean, well, I mean, what else would you Well, is it especially effective against over 50s players? Well, it didn't seem to do too badly um, yeah. out of the opening, although you know, Fred yeah. uh, came back quite strongly. I was so. going to say for our younger viewers, but I expect we won't have many younger viewers, but for our younger viewers, the 150 attack is after like the old, the old, Brian would know all about this, the old ECF grading system where grades were measured in um, like one, a scale from, I don't know, naught up to about 200 and something. And yeah. um and oh, you you haven't done it exactly. Where you do? Well, like, I, I, I kind of like I, I partially wimped out of the one fifty. So the one fifty. Yeah, you just try and make them down the H file is basically. I was, the idea. I was going for a positional thing. So the one fifty yeah. in spirit would be something like this, and then probably this kind of stuff. And then I yeah. suppose if you really wanted to, you might waste some moves over these kind of moves. Um, yeah. But yeah, the, the the intent would be just to checkmate black on the king. It's just for checkmate, and, isn't it? Yeah. And, and black obviously would just castle into it all, and, and it would all. Yeah, yeah, they, they just castle into it, and you just mate them. That's basically. Um, but but actually, by playing kind of this sort of move, you, you get the impression that black's not looking to castle that quickly. So I I, I kind of flip the moves over a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Um, and in fact, he's doing what you might call this uh, hippopotamus system. Okay. And where you put the, the knights on d7, e7, 
and then given a bit of time he might even do something like this this bishop here oh, he really doesn't put anything past the third rank at all yeah well i, I think that, that would be the pure hippo right i think yeah. sort of, what are you going to do about it and it is actually relatively hard to do anything because if, if white white at some point probably needs to push a pawn and if white goes for like a d5 break then maybe black can play e5 and if white goes for e5 black might play d5 so it, it, it's not quite clear how you break through as white mm. sometimes you can end up with the worst position so I, I faced it a few times in blitz um, but nothing really beyond that yeah um, anyway we, we stick with the, the 150 attack yeah. for the moment because black might castle right you, you've yeah. always got the possibility Oh, well, now you can do it. You can go bishop h6 here. Well, yeah, and, and I think perhaps I should have do that. I, I mean, I did consider that, but I figured maybe if I do bishop h6, the black just does this, this, oh, and yeah. then sort of says, okay, what's your queen doing over there? And, yeah. and you might be able to play queen g7 and possibly win this yeah. pawn, but, I mean, how exciting yeah, is that? Yeah, you don't want to stop him castling, do you? Because then he's no. not going to castle into it. No, so I, I, I sort of just do a, a quiet little waiting move, h4. <laughs> uh, hoping for the castle uh, but, at, but at this point he goes for h6 um and um, so already white's i mean i mean white could maybe develop the king's bishop but already white's almost forced into into making a commitment so i did actually castle at this point black can now really start playing on the queen side maybe throw some yeah. queen side pawns forward um, which is um, what he started to do um and if white plays h5 then black can can maybe just play g5 and keep the position blocked um so i didn't do that straight away um but as, as we'll see i've got a cunning plan for playing h5 g5 and then um playing a knight takes g5 sacrifice. Sacrifice. Ooh, this is exciting yeah so instead i just put the bishop on d3 so the one of the ideas of this is that if black plays b5 b4 hitting the knight as well he might then the yeah. knight can go back to e2 and, and all yeah. the pieces yeah. sort of coordinate i mean it's maybe not the absolute best move because it does leave the d4 pawn maybe a little less protected yeah. um, anyway that's what i did and he goes for the b5 um so now i think i'll make my first attempt at sacrificing material okay. it was quite keen not to accept any sacrifices right so I just play e5. Um, how, how old, roughly, do you know is was your opponent? Oh, how senior was he? He was probably a little, you know, maybe I'm going to guess he was maybe ten years older than me. I, okay. I don't remember that. I Pretty damn senior then. Oh, yeah, yeah, a little bit more more experienced, I think, is the phrase. More experienced. Yes, I'm getting the phrasing right. Yeah. I've got to get the phrasing right. Um. So yeah. So if black kind of naively takes that pawn and um, then something like this might happen and the game would have been over very very quickly i mean black can't really open it up that quickly yeah. because it's a b5 tactic tactic and this queen is unprotected this king is in check and very very bad things are happening yeah um, so he didn't do that no he just instead played it's bishop out, very sensible. But now I've got the e4 square for my knight. Um, so I put it there. He decides he doesn't want my knight um, living there for a while because I am threatening him to take twice on d6. So he takes, he takes, that, takes back. And then, as we said before, um, black can block up the position. Yeah. Um, and now black can move the knight round, and it's a, it's a little bit kind of annoying, right? Having the knight come into c4, hitting the queen, hitting the bishop, hitting yeah. b2. Um, I mean, you can see that this could go sort of badly wrong at some point. I mean, and in fact, it, I guess some of that happens later on. Um, but for the moment, um, black's really only attacking with the knight, so I've got time to push the pawn. Get um, h pawn going h pawn is going and i mean if black doesn't push the pawn to g5 then i can take on g6 oh yeah yeah that's a nightmare then okay. lots of pieces on on the h6 pawn so he's kind of forced to play g5 um and now we get the second attempt at, at sacrificing material so we play knight takes 
uh, G5. Yeah, and is this sacrifice actually sound? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is sound. Excellent. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, it didn't take it right. If he takes it, I think I'm doing really quite nicely, right? Would you if just throw H6 in at some point? I take bishop takes G5. Let's say he plays knight C4. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Play queen queen F4, and then pretty much regardless of what he does, um, I can push this pawn to H6. The bishop maybe has to go back to oh, yeah. um, f8 and maybe then f6 maybe and i've got bishop f6 i can maybe even just push this pawn all the way through to yeah uh, it, it's pretty nasty or infiltrate with the queen um maybe g5 g7 and so on so it, it, it's not something he really wants to do um yeah so instead he just plays knight c4 um i decide to take that takes back so, so now I'm a pawn up, which wasn't really the goal. The goal was to sacrifice a piece, but I'm a pawn up instead. Um, and it's slightly annoying, right? Because I could just move my knight back, and I do in another move move my knight back, but I don't really want to be wasting too many moves with my knight whilst my queen side's getting opened up. But anyway, I push forward. Okay. Black gets ready to bring the queen to the queen side. And now I do move the knight back because... I mean, the the main plan I could think of really was just to push the pawns forward or in, in some kind of order. And to do that, I need to move the, the knight back out of the way. Yeah. Okay, yeah. leaving yourself the possibility of making the bathtub shape. Uh, absolutely, yeah, 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 yeah. Given half a chance, we will push the, the pawn here. I think this is the bathtub. Exactly here. so. So yeah, that, that's, that's the grand plan. Um, but around about here, I start to go somewhat wrong. Um, so black's threatening the a two pawn, and obviously this B line's open. Um, so my king's in a little bit of pressure there. So I've got a choice, maybe three choices of what I do with my king. Um, I can push the pawn forward to a three, which is what I did. I could play king B one, which is perhaps the most natural move. Um, and as it turns out the best move yeah. um, or, I, or i could maybe kind of consider moving my king i was thinking about that yeah, yeah. so it's kind of three ways of doing it i, I think i i think the computer uh, told me I, I chose the absolutely the worst one the worst one okay um so That's probably good. the best way of doing it is king b1 but it's kind of committal right the, the reason one of the reasons why i didn't do it is is you're really committing your king to either being on b1 or maybe going to a1 and then there's no real escape from it if black does get pressure on on these lines um so probably i should have done something like this so. but i didn't i went for the pawn to a3 option because yeah. i thought i would break through against on the king side quite quickly right so i thought it didn't mm -hmm. matter that much but he played some pretty good moves now so we do the bathtub yeah and then a really nice move he plays King d7, so he's moving his king out of danger. Right. Away from the king's side, yeah. Clever. Might, in some cases, sort of move, you know, this kind of direction out of the way. Yeah. Now he's yeah. already got one rook on this file. He can potentially maneuver this bishop back and maybe sacrifice on a3. This knight yeah. can maybe come in to these sort of squares. It's kind of a little bit awkward. And then the other bit... Yeah. Nice so, yeah. 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 I'm a professional arrow. <laughs> um so yeah so what does white do about it i mean you don't really just want to be defending although i mean maybe i should have done a little bit more on the defensive side but i decided to go for trying to break through yeah. anyway so this is the third attempt at trying to sacrifice material um he didn't take it if he did then i would do something like this um and the rook breaks yeah. through here or the pawn comes back here and it becomes very very yeah. good for white so he, he doesn't take um, no, no. take that back he just carries on with his attack and now from being somewhat better at the opening it's probably sort of roughly level somewhere around here um take on here and then activate a rook good idea he, he regroups the bishop and then I can get a rock on the seventh, not so much for having the rock on the seventh, but actually my main aim is to sacrifice it for this bishop to stop my getting chatmated with a bishop sacrifice on here. 
So that's so fourth of... attempt to sacrifice. Yeah, well, I do manage to get it in. This hmm. particular sacrifice. Um, so I'm trying to keep it solid um, on the queen side, but it's quite difficult to defend this square in particular. Um, and I could have done a better job of doing it anyway. So he, he's got a quite easy attack now, right? Mm. One rook coming in. And my next move is 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 a mistake. Um, I, I thought it'd be sensible to have a rook defending the b2 pawn yeah. horizontally, kind of logical on, on one angle. Um, but apparently that is not the best way. I should have done something like the queen defending rook over and then maneuvered this knight okay um maybe something like this this and then put this knight on onto d1 so that that would have been a, a much better defensive defensive plan yeah but i didn't do that instead i put the rook on on h2 and now he's he's getting he, i mean he is probably a bit better in, in this position so i put my queen where um so I, I at least i have plenty more time at this point so i'm putting my queen it's attacking black screen so it's a little bit harder for black to take yeah. on the issue. so um, i'm trying to defend tactically and given a chance i'm going to try and infiltrate with my pieces um on the king side um, and any kind of ending i get is going to be quite good because i've got oh yeah you're going to have this past h pawn aren't you pawns um going forward here yeah so black moves the king out of the way, also freeing up the bishop to um, join the attack. So that's my cue to sacrifice. Um, the bishop has got to go. The bishop has got to go. So I, I'm, it's kind of, I've got a pawn um, and I've got these two pawns are incredibly strong if we ever get to an end game. But there is quite a bit of a danger of, of not reaching that end game um, with black's attack. So probably, again, I should have done a move like knight f2 and, and slowly regrouping over here, um, but I didn't. I instead um, wanted to make sure of that pawn first. And now my opponent starts hitting a pretty strong attack. And um, I decided to try and activate all my pieces. Yeah. Uh, but I hadn't, to be honest, I hadn't even seen this next move, which is very strong so my opponent was down to probably only a couple of minutes at this point right um, so what if you take it I, i've got to take it if i don't take it then i think then it's okay so take it and take it. and now c3 and it's nasty yeah um very nasty so i mean with best play black black should probably be winning this um but we don't see best play because my opponent had spent quite a lot of time on the previous moves and i had quite a bit of time to find a reasonable line so i'm not really interested in winning the pawn but i am mm. activating this yeah. knight and maybe coming in here trying to swap off a few um pieces yeah it's nice there isn't it because also it restricts that king yeah so Black maneuvers the queen so that it's no longer under this indirect. Yeah. So um, now he's threatening what C takes B2. And if king takes, then just queen takes queen and queen the pawn or something. I know you've still got that rook. That rook is quite useful on H2. Yeah, yeah. So it's just yeah. about holding together. I think yeah. the, the computer says is that instead of playing queen C4, which looks quite logical, uh, queen A5 um, would actually have been winning. Okay. Um, I don't think it's clear to a human that there's... Yeah, to try and allow for the check on E1, I suppose. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, that kind of thing. I mean, I guess it's not exposed to being exchanged on C4. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. did go? so he didn't do that. Did this instead. And now I just about have enough time to activate my pieces. So this, this is quite a nice move because it not only defends the back rank from a queen mm. check, but it's also threatening to come in here Very good. maybe to f f7 um so we're combining defense and attack um my opponent brings the rook forward and now i can play this with a cunning plan um if i get a free move then rook f8 checkmate that would be checkmate 
And he, he did only have a, like a minute or so left. So yeah. he has to the mate. You never know. You never know. So he deals with the mate. Um, but here I get an opportunity to um, remove one of his attacking pieces. Oh, that's good, yeah. Get rid of that. And now, now I'm now I'm doing okay, but it's still a little bit um, awkward, right? Um, mm. Because that pawn is is annoying. But I, I can offer a queen swap, as Keith Arkell would do. Yeah, if you can get an end game. <laughs> um, and luckily, your bishop backward bishop move covering c1. Yeah, and and this move, um, I think there's various defensive moves, um, but this is quite nice because. Um, we activate the bishop and um, defending the, the pawn and also these pawns are ready to run now mm. <coughs> black takes the pawn and at, at some level it, it's a it's a mopping up exercise at least if your computer is is mopping up and it, it's mm. not difficult now because we've got an extra piece and in fact it's possible to give up the extra piece just to get an end game um without okay. the without the b2 pawn so you put the bishop in the way i mean i mean there are other ways of winning but now we're, we can take this pawn yeah. um, and just win with the, the other two pawns as pretty much this happens you get a check and black can win that bishop um, but it really doesn't matter you yeah. just liquidate to a one end game and now the, the sort of sick move um, forcing the rook off is just to play rook f5. No way to keep the rook on the board. Oh, very good. Away. So yeah. yeah, takes the bishop, swap, swap. And then this pawn ending is winning. Yeah. You're in the square of his pawn and he's not in the square of yours. So yeah, the glancing might, might not be that clear, but uh, the square of this pawn goes... And hopefully I can draw a square. Yeah. Yeah, you have. We are in a square, and this square here is um some distance away from this king. Yes. So yeah, square of the pawn, and that was it. Congratulations, so, Phil. Win against an FM. Yeah. Nice, nice, game. nice yeah. attacking game, loads of sacrificial attempts as well. Yeah. And even some of them executed. Yeah, some of them executed, and it, it was quite a quite a lot of fun to play. So I enjoyed that one. Okay, great. Okay, we're going to wind up. Um, one thing: what would you say to someone who is thinking about trying out seniors chess next year? Um, well, yeah, I, I would say um, broadly, give it a go. You you might think it's well. Um, I mean, I mean, for the team tournaments, you might think, well, it's it's England. It must be you. Must, you need do you need to be a crown master or an IM or something to play? Um, and in fact, I think as long as you're a reasonably experienced club um, standard player, you could find a team um, to play in. And your opponents, yes, there are some really strong opponents you're playing against, um, but there are are also some you know slightly weaker teams. So I, I think it it is suitable for a broad range of senior players. Um, and, I, and I think more generally for for senior tournaments, not necessarily the the, the team tournaments. Uh, my impression is it, it's a pretty good. Uh, community spirit there and you get a chance to meet some a uh, group of players that you'll, you'll meet in, in a number of tournaments get to know them um, um and it brings a more social aspect to the to the game which you know i certainly enjoy and i think other people do brilliant all right thanks very much phil uh, thank you thank you okay bye-bye bye-bye